Have you ever created a database design, but you weren't sure if it was actually good? A lot of developers jump straight into creating tables and relationships, but don't stop to review the design before they start building. And that can lead to problems later, such as performance issues and confusing table structures. In this video, I'll show you six checks you can use to review your database design and make sure it looks good. We'll look at a simple database, which has a customers, orders, and products tables. We'll review this design by performing a few checks on it in this video. For each step, I'll show you the database design as well as the SQL create table statements. There's also an easy way to do this automatically using a tool that I built. I'll show you the tool later in the video and you can try it yourself using the link in the description. The first check is make sure every table has a primary key. Primary keys uniquely identify each row and without them, your tables can cause problems. With the primary key, it's easy to find a single specific row in a table and records can be related to other tables. Here's an example. We can look at our customer table and see that it has an ID. This is good. I assume it is to identify the customer. However, there's no primary key constraint. This is the database feature that actually marks the column as a primary key. So we should add a primary key. I'll add that into the diagram here and also add it to the SQL to show you how it's done. Now you can add it next to the column name or after all of the columns in the table, it's up to you. You can also specify more than one column in a primary key. It's just important that you have a primary key. If a table doesn't have one, it's a sign your design may not be complete. The second check is to make sure relationships between tables are set up correctly with foreign keys. For example, your orders table should reference your customers table so you can see which customer placed the order. In this design, there is no foreign key, so let's add one. This ensures you can't create an order without linking it to a valid customer. Without foreign keys, you risk orphan records and broken data. The third check is to look for duplicated data. Using the design, it may be hard to see the data, but you can imagine what the data would look like when you work on the design. If you see multiple sets of related columns in one table, that's a sign you should move them to a separate table. For example, in the customer table, we have two phone number fields, phone number one and two. What happens if someone has more than two phone numbers, or if we enter a value in phone number two and not phone number one? It's better to create a phone number table and link it back to the customer. This keeps your design flexible and avoids messing repeating columns. We can do that by adding a new table called phone number. We'll give it an ID as a primary key, like we learned before. We also add the actual phone number here, then the customer ID it relates to. This is a foreign key back to the customer table. The create table statements can be updated as well with these changes. I'm doing them both manually in this video, but ideally you would make the change in one place, such as the ERD, then generate the SQL. This tool I'm using, DB Diagram, can do that. The fourth check is to see if any columns contain a list of possible values. These should be moved to a lookup table. If you have any status columns, type columns or categories, these are often good candidates for lookup tables. This can help by having a single defined list of values that you can use in the related table and in the application and reports. You define a value in one place and can edit it if needed. One place we can do that is the order status column. For example, instead of storing the order status as a varchar in the order table, we can create a separate lookup table for this. We will call it order status and give it an ID and a name, then link it to the orders table by changing the order status column to an order status ID as a foreign key. This avoids inconsistent data and helps your queries. The fifth check is to review your data types. Make sure each column has an appropriate type for the data it stores. This can help with query performance as some types are faster than others. It can also help writing queries as using the correct data type can help with joins, filtering and sorting. The exact data type depends on your requirements, but there are a few main things I look for. Use date or date time for dates and not varchar. This is because the date formats will only allow valid dates, making it easier to avoid bad data. It also makes it easy to perform calculations on dates and sort values. If you need to store time zones, then choose a date data type with a time zone component. For numbers, store them as integers and not text. This makes working with them easier and you have less reliance on functions. If you need to store decimal places, you often have a specific data type or parameters you can use for this. 
generally avoid using float data types as they aren't as precise. So look through your tables and review each column to check if the data type you've chosen is appropriate. Let's look at our design. We can see that the order date column here in the orders table is set to a varchar. This will capture the value, but it won't let us work with the date, ensure it is valid or sort the data. We should change this to a data type that stores date and time. Do we need to include the time zone with this? In this example, we could assume that we don't, as maybe it's a single local business. But if you're taking orders from around the world, then perhaps we need a data type with time zone. Or maybe we should store time zone anyway. Finally, check for naming consistency. This means the names of the tables and the names of the columns. There are a few things to look for. Use a consistent style for your names, either snake case or camel case. Personally, I prefer snake case because databases usually store the object names in a case insensitive way, so snake case is easier. But choose an approach and stick with it. Also, be consistent with singular or plural names. Is it customer or customers? Order or orders? Personally, I prefer singular, but the main point here is to be consistent in your database. Make it singular for every table or plural for every table. Then for the columns, use the same format for your ID values and other columns across the database that are similar. This makes it easy to query and remember what the columns are called. We can see a couple of things in our design that don't meet these guidelines. Our customer table is called customer, which is singular, but the orders table is called orders, which is plural. The word order is a reserved word in SQL, meaning we will have problems if we call the table order. We could call it something else, like cust order, or we could rename customer to customers. In this example, let's rename the tables to be plural, so customer becomes customers. Next, our product table has a column called product ID, which is a different format to the ID in both customers and orders. Let's rename that to be consistent. Now our names are consistent. Now you could check all of this manually like we did, but I've built an AI tool called SQL Schema Linter that makes it much easier. Here's how it works. You paste in your create table statements into this box here. I'll do this for our original database design before we made our manual changes. Then select the database vendor you're working with, just so the tool can provide specific advice on features and data types of the vendor. If you don't have a vendor yet or just want general advice, you can leave it as it is. Then click Analyze Schema. The tool then reviews your schema and provides feedback on the design. For example, it can point out missing primary keys, inconsistent names, or where lookup tables would be useful. We can see the output here. It's analyzed each of the tables, explains the potential issues, the reasoning, and provided an update create table SQL statement at the bottom. And the best part is you can try this tool yourself for free. Just click on the link in the description to get access. A lot of this is guidance, so if you don't agree with it or don't want the changes, you don't have to make the changes, but it's a handy tool to help you review your design. There are a range of things that you can and should check in your database design to ensure it can work well and avoid any future problems. You can do this manually, or you can use the tool I built for this, which is linked in the description. If you're designing a database and want to know more about the full start to finish process of going from an idea to a design, you'll want to watch this video next, which shows you exactly how to do that. Thanks for watching.